Hey everybody, I'm Dave Luke, the Trapper Guy, and today I'm going to be talking about how and the best way to garden for wildlife. Now, as a nuisance wildlife trapper, I'm usually telling people how to get rid of wildlife from their yard, but not all wildlife, it's usually a specific species that's causing a specific problem. So there's nothing wrong with attracting wildlife. In fact, you should attract wildlife. It's good for the environment. But you don't want to do it the bad way. You want to do it a good way so you're not causing any problems for you or your neighbors or the wildlife. Now the number one thing you think about when gardening for wildlife is food. Now there's two ways to feed wildlife in your yard. And the first way is just putting out feed or feeders. And I'm not going to lie to you, if you throw a big bag of corn on the ground or you put up bird feeders, you're going to see a lot of wildlife. But the problem is it brings out the bad behavior in the animals. It's kind of like if you're going to have an event for strangers at your house, which do you think you're going to have more problems with? The nice Sunday picnic or a kegger? Now the best way to feed wildlife in your yard is with native plants. Now you can start off with a couple and hopefully get as many in your yard as you can and now you're feeding the native animals in your area the food that they're eating before your neighborhood even existed. Now you can get native plants that bury different times of the year and then you're going to bring in the animals that utilize those berries and you can have different plants that bloom and that's going to bring in butterflies and insects which in turn will bring in the animals that utilize those insects. So now you have a self-sustaining food chain ecosystem going on in your own yard. Now, wildlife in the woods has all kinds of natural shelter, old dead trees, logs, dens, things like that. So unless you live in the woods or your house backs up to the woods, you're gonna have to come up with some other options in your yard. Now, the first thing you wanna think about when it comes to shelter for wildlife in your yard is you don't want them utilizing your house. So make sure you go around your house, all your soffits and vents and things like that are closed up nice because you don't want somebody like me to have to come out and get wildlife out of your attic. Now, if you've been tearing up some of your lawn and putting in some more native plants, you're already creating some more shelter. A lot of those native plants, uh, animals would use shelter underneath those plants or within those plants. Now, if you don't have a lot of those plants that are big enough now, um, or you want to supplement some shelters, you can always do a brush pile. And basically, that's just going to be a bunch of sticks that you're throwing in a pile that animals can utilize. Don't turn it into a mulch pile and start throwing kitchen scraps on it because now you have another feeding problem. Now one of the best things you can have in your yard for wildlife, not only for shelter but also for food for a lot of insectivores, is standing dead wood. If you have a dead tree in your yard and it's in a safe location where you're not worried about it falling on your house or something like that, it's best just to leave it up. A lot of animals will dig into it, your woodpeckers, and eventually raccoons and things like that are going to be able to make nests in the cavities in the trees. And uh, if it is in a spot where you're worried about it, you can always cut it down, just remove and leave maybe the bottom six foot of it. Or at the very least, after you have the tree cut down, you can leave a dead log on the ground. Now you can supplement with homemade or store-bought shelter houses. Uh, there's nothing wrong with bird houses, bat houses. Um, different types of shelters. You can look online if you're if not buying them and you're making them. You can find the dimensions for whatever wildlife in your area that you want to give shelter for in your yard. Now the next thing you're going to need when gardening for wildlife is water. And unless you have a pond in your backyard, you're going to have to come up with a different plan. Now let's face it, all animals love and utilize water. Now your plan for watering wildlife can be as elaborate or as simple as you want. The main thing you need is that you want the water to be clean. So if you have a big elaborate waterfall and stream and a bunch of fish in the pond, um, you don't really have to worry about that. You have a little ecosystem going on there. The water is going to be fairly clean. Uh, but if you just have a simple small bird bath, you just want to make sure you clean it out regularly and refresh the water. Because if you just have a small stagnant water source, the only wildlife you're really going to be helping is mosquitoes. So hey, if you want some more information about how to put this specific type of plant in place in your yard um, to your local area, you want to check different native plant nurseries, 
cooperative extension offices or universities and they'll be able to give you specific plants, specific ideas for the specific species in your area. Hey, thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe.